Pac-12 Media Days was on Friday, and George Klyovkov had a lot to say. Now, I'm not going to come out and talk about specific quotes or anything like that. There will be some that I mention here or there, but uh, what I want to know here, uh, which, uh, by the way, speaking of Pac-12, congratulations to uh, Konzano and Wilner. A new podcast coming out. Those two have been the voices of the Pac-12 for quite some time. I am beyond excited to be able to listen to both of them riff on what's going on in the Pac-12. And this seems like the perfect time to do it, right? There's a lot of people interested in what's going on out there. Those two guys know just about everything that there is to know. So congratulations to those two. Now, back to George Glavkov. Was he just mad on Friday, or was there some truthfulness in his comments? Because everybody that I have talked to, everybody that I have read, seems to believe that his comment about uh, we haven't decided if we're going shopping there, talking about the Big 12, and talking about the Big 12 being scared of the Pac-12, et cetera, I don't know that I believe any of that. I don't know that there is a single Big 12 school right now that would rather join the Pac-12. Now, I mentioned BYU before because I think logistically it makes a little bit more sense, right? As opposed to going from UCF all the way to BYU, et cetera, it seemed like that would make more sense. But when you talk about media valuations, it seems like the Big 12 is going to be worth significantly more, significantly more, excuse me, than the Pac-12 right now. Now, it all depends on who the Pac-12 ends up adding. But you hear that there's only been talk of Pac-12 schools moving to the Big 12. Has anybody thought of any Big 12 schools that would actually want to move over to the Pac-12? And are there any schools that the Pac-12 uh, Pac would want? That's, that's my question here. I don't know that there is. And while it does surprise me a little bit, when you've looked at the grand scheme of college athletics over the last however many years, when you look at that and you think about the teams that were left over in the Big 12, their value, I would not imagine, would be higher than those teams in the Pac-12. But when you start looking at the late-night TV window, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The fact that the Big 12 just went and got BYU and now they're bringing in Cincinnati and UCF and Houston, three big-time brands, and then you add BYU, that's a fourth. You bring those in, all of a sudden your media rights are worth a pretty big deal more than what we originally thought they might be. right? Bob's, Bob Bowlesby said that their media rights would be worth half as much without Oklahoma and Texas. That may be true, but that original media rights deal was done years ago, much the same way as the Pac-12s. But when you look at the people that are actually watching the, the games, you look at ESPN windows uh, versus FS1 windows, ABC, etc. You know, you have to take the channel into consideration. It's very interesting. Uh, another question I had here, how valuable is the late-night window? Uh, it, without the regional sports networks, I don't know that it's that valuable. Uh, I did have, and I'm not going to be able to pull it up on the screen, but I can read off some of the stats that I was able to put together right quick before I jumped in on the show. And uh, if you look at just last season, 2021, you look at the late night windows, and there were 24 games that were broadcast on a network that actually gave out their ratings, right? Nielsen ratings, et cetera. There were 24 games, and not all of them Pac-12, not all Big 12, not all whatever. And only 10 of them had over a million viewers. Only two of those ranked higher than number 10 for the week, right? So, for example, uh, week 10, you had Utah and Stanford drew 452,000 viewers. That's a 10.30 p.m. Eastern time game. And it was number 23 for the week. That was a Friday night standalone window. Now, on Saturday, you had USC and Arizona State on ESPN. Now, the other one was on FS1. But this one's on ESPN. It drew 1.608 million viewers. And that was still only 11th best for the week. Uh, move back to, let's see, what's the highest rated game that they had? Or the highest viewed game? Um, that might have been the one. That might have been it. 1.608 million for USC and Arizona State. And, da, 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 yeah. All right, so as far as uh, actual ratings, Utah and BYU on ESPN in Week 2 
That one drew $1.503 million. That was on Saturday, September 11th, and it was number eight for the week. So how valuable is that late-night window? Everybody talks about that when it comes to the Pac-12. I'm, I'm not certain, especially with the ones that are left over, because the ones that have drawn you know millions of viewers, uh, okay, I mean, BYU is already there. They're already in the Big 12, so the Big 12 will be able to have some of that late-night window. Other than that, USC is gone. UCLA is gone. Like, those are... Those are your big ones. I'm I'm just curious what to expect out of this. Now Oregon is still out there. Uh, you you put them at a decent window and give them in a you put them in a good game and they're going to draw some people, right? Week four, Arizona at Oregon on ESPN. It got a little dicey. Uh, second half roundabout drew 1.656 million viewers, and that's a 10:30 p.m. Eastern time kick. Uh, you know, very interesting. And of course, that happened to be Oregon just a couple of weeks after they knocked off Ohio State. I want to know about that. Uh, The other question about the Pac-12, are they going to expand? Now, George Kalafkov said that they are not interested in expansion right now, but of course uh, nobody has ruled anything out when it comes to it. Uh, We've mentioned on the show multiple times San Diego State would be somebody decent to bring in. Now, San Diego State's TV ratings not all that great, right? We understand that. But when you look at who they may expand with, you are not looking for short-term value. You're not looking for right now. And it's much the same way that the Big 12 did, right? They expanded with teams that can continue to grow in big markets. It's the same thing the AAC just did when they brought in all these giant media markets with Birmingham. Birmingham's not a huge media market, but it is when it comes to college football. Charlotte, uh, FAU, down in Boca Raton, et cetera, right? You're bringing in the big markets, If the Pac-12 expands, you bring in SMU, something like that, you bring in San Diego State, etc., you are looking at a long-term play, somebody that can establish in a big market like that. Um, Now, again, you're not going to know anything about Pac-12 expansion until, uh, let's see, until the Big Ten rights are done, really, around Labor Day or so. And if they go past Labor Day, then it is what it is. It just extends everything else out. Uh, but as far as that goes, I mean, you're, you're not going to know the current value of the Pac-12 deal for these schools, and nobody's going to sign a grant of rights until they figure out what's happening with Big Ten expansion, et cetera, right? Yet you want to know what's going on with that. You want to know what's going on with the Big 12 as well. I'm I'm really curious what to think about with George Klyovkov, um, it Does Does the Pac-12 try and go shopping for any of these Big 12 teams? I don't know. I don't think so, uh, but maybe you guys can tell me. You guys jump into the comments. I am I am very curious about this uh, because he came out just guns a-blazing last week, it felt like, because some, some of those comments were very aggressive. I will say that. Very aggressive for somebody that seems to be pinned in a corner and doesn't... Everybody can say that they are all together, etc., but nobody's signing a grant of rights right now. Nobody's signing up to stay in that conference right now until they know all the details. And we're not going to know those until the Big Ten gets done. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures. Or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.